Hi everyone, Dr. Susan Brown at Alkaline for Life. Today we're going to talk a little bit about fatty acids and we're going to talk about particularly essential fatty acids. These are the fatty acids that we cannot produce within our body and we must consume them. Just like we must consume vitamins and minerals, we must consume fats, certain fats, in order to continue our survival as a human being. These fatty acids are very important. They play roles in cell membrane structure. They're important to the development and functioning of the brain and the nervous system. They're important for hormone production. They're important for the transport of cholesterol from the body. They're important for hair, skin, and nails. The liver function and even immune function is really dependent on these essential fats. And most of all, many of the essential fats, particularly the omega-3 fats from fish oils, are very anti-inflammatory. And as you know, all disease has an inflammatory basis to it. So the essential fats are two families, omega-3s and the omega-6s. The omega-3s we commonly think of as the fish oils. In fact, they're some of the most important omega-3s are the fish oils. However, omega-3s are also available in certain plants like chi and walnuts and flax. Good to note that those omega-3s from plants, however, cannot be converted into EPA and DHA very easily. EPA and DHA are the essential fats from fish and that's actually the product that we probably most likely need to consume. The omega-6 family, we consume a lot of omega-6 oils. These are the plant oils from safflower, sunflower, corn, soy. The omega-6s, we take a lot of them. The omega-3s, we don't get enough of. In fact, as an anthropologist, I can tell you that in times, evolutionary times, in our historic past, we consumed a lot of omega-3 fats because the animals we ate ate grass and they, with that grass, produced these omega-3 fats, the EPA and the DHA. Today, even if you get eggs from a chicken that is scratching around in the yard, they're going to have more EPA and DHA than farm commercial eggs. So we consume far too little omega-3 fats, far too many omega-6 fats, and particularly this reflects itself in the inflammatory response. Many times the omega-6 oils that we consume today actually cause inflammation. The omega-3 oils have to help to protect against inflammation. So let's dive a little bit deeper into the omega-3 fats, particularly EPA and DHA. As you will notice in the blog, the blog that's accompanying this, this, this little chat, the omega-3 fats play many, many roles, particularly essential benefits for the heart to help with insulin sensitivity. And they also even help with anxiety and mood. And of course, omega-3 fats have been used by many to correct this dry eye syndrome, for example. Omega-3 fats are strong anti-inflammatory agents and therefore they're very successful also in bone health. Studies in Spain show that osteopenic women who had higher omega-3 fats in the diets had better bone density. So let's talk about the proper dosing of omega-3 fats. A good dose of omega-3 fats is 3,000 milligrams a day. That is 3,000 milligrams a day of when you combine EPA and DHA, the two major omega-3 fats we're interested in. When you combine those two together, you want to get 3,000 a day. When you have this effective dose, you find very good benefits on bone health, on eye health, on heart health, all the parameters where well, the omega-3 fats are important. You do better if you get 3,000 milligrams a day. And the form of omega-3 fats, like I mentioned, you we need to use directly EPA and DHA itself because the body does not convert very much of the plant omega-3 fats into EPA and DHA. And the effective agents are the EPA and DHA as far as the omega-3 fats go. So you want about 3,000 milligrams EPA and DHA together. Now you might say, well, what about eating salmon or other fatty fish? And it's true, those fish can offer a nice amount of EPA and DHA. There was a recently a study done looking at 70 fish from all, 70 salmon actually, from all over the United States. And they found that the average omega content, the average EPA and DHA together was about 700 to 1,500 
milligrams. So you could get a substantial amount in a serving of salmon if you're lucky, but you're not getting uh, you're not getting near the three thousand that you need every day. And while it's good to have fish a few times a week, we must take into account that fish does have, unfortunately, the contamination with many heavy metals. And so having a, a high, high fish diet is probably not the greatest idea for overall health. But certainly fish can be a good source of the omega-3 fats. If you're wondering about the form of omega-3 fat, research shows that the triglyceride form is much better better absorbed by the body that we are accustomed to absorbing the triglyceride form and we get much more bioactivity than when than we do from the what's called the ethyl ester form in fact the triglyceride form of the omega-3 fats is shown to be 70 percent more absorbable than the ethyl ester form and it is more efficiently digested so Omega-3 fats are important. We do not consume enough of them. We consume too many of the omega-6 fats, which cause inflammation. We need the anti-inflammatory effect of the omega-3 fats. You get these ideally with EPA, DHA in a very purified form, perhaps 3,000 milligrams a day. The form that we use, the form I like, is a special one that's been derived from anchovy and it's from anchovy only. So if a person has a concern with not wanting to consume other fish, they know that this product that we use at Alkaline for Life is, has only anchovy. Very highly purified. All omega-3 fats should be highly purified because of the problem of the contamination of the oceans. I wish you well and May you enjoy a healthy long life with adequate omega-3 fats.